Has the UK just signed a death warrant for the PHEV? Is this the end of the dream, or more accurately, this finally the end of the biggest con in the history of the automotive industry? Or are we headed for idiocracy? I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. I'm not against PHEVs. They do have a place in the EV world. I believe the main reason for them should be to help people transition from petrol to full EVs. Let me explain, and here I will be using a real-life PHEV. It'll be the BMW 330i, which I featured in a recent video, where I covered charging a PHEV at home using a 3-pin plug, with a selection of portable chargers in a head-to-head -head against a full 7kW home charger, and which was the best. There's a link to the, that video down below. Now, if you tell a sane, sensible person that the range of an EV is typically 200 miles, that they freak out. That's absolutely crazy. I can't possibly cope on that. And they really mean it. Sane, common sense has now gone out the window. They need oh, at least four or five hundred miles before they'll even look at one. A thousand miles would be far better. And these are the sane and sensible ones. The others, well, they're just screaming and laughing fit by now. EVs will never catch on. But two things change, the sane and the sensible. And the first of these is if you can sit them down sensibly and ask them just a simple question. Just one. What is the longest single journey you have done in your car in the last 12 months? Not, not a road trip where you stop and sleep every night, but a single journey. So according to all the data, 95% of all people asked will answer, it's nowhere near 200 miles. It's considerably less. For many, it's as low as 50 miles. The average trip, according to the UK government, is less than 10 miles. And the light suddenly dawns in their mind. Ah, I think I see what you're saying. But, and they then go on to state another reason why an EV is not right for them. Look, that's fine. Well, I said two things change them. The second is if they actually take the plunge and get a PHEV where range anxiety is no longer a factor. You always have the petrol engine and the petrol tank. You can always fill up and you can never run out. Well, the RAC for one would disagree with you there. They and the other breakdown services attend over three quarters of a million calls a year where a petrol or diesel car has run out and rolled to a halt at the side of the road or motorway and a further quarter of a million will call a fuel doctor to pump out the tank when they put in the wrong fuel. They only have a choice of two, for goodness sake. By the way, those numbers obviously do not cover those who just ring their mate or spouse and get them to pick up a plastic can, fill it up and rescue them no matter where they are in the country. Every petrol station in the country now sells them. I suspect there may be a lot more in this category. Anyway, I digress. I get many comments stating, oh, I love my PHEV. In fact, since I bought it 12 months ago, I've only ever put in £20 worth of petrol. It's really economical and it's great to be driving on the battery, which I charge every night at home. So let's have a quick look at the BMW 330i. It is a PHEV, has a battery and a petrol engine, and the battery has a stated range on their website of 62 miles. Whoa, sorry, did I misread that? 62 miles electric only range? They wouldn't buy an EV with 200 mile range because that's far too short, but they bought a PHEV with a much longer range on petrol, but only use it on electric with a 62 mile range. Do you see my confusion? Well, if they cope perfectly well on a 62 mile electric only range and only use £20 worth of petrol, well, £20, that's about three gallons these days at 30 miles to the gallon, which this specific model was doing according to the dashboard readout, that's in the video, and 90 miles is easily within the range of a full EV with a range of 200 miles, 90 plus 62, 152 miles. Now, do you get my point about this transition to full EV? Many PHEV drivers in this exact situation will, when their lease or finance agreement ends and they're changing, 
work this out for themselves and they simply buy or lease a full EV next time and then they're perfectly happy. Now a very small number will have spent a considerable amount more on petrol and for them the full EV might not yet be the answer. For them they should get another PHEV as long as they make them. You see I'm not against them, I'm simply against them for the vast majority of motorists. OK, we're going to do some maths and don't worry, it's really easy stuff, not complex at all. The stated combined WLTP range on electric of the BMW is 353.1 miles, but the stated range on battery, 62 miles. I'm confused. They're saying you can drive for 353.1 miles on electric, but the battery will only last 62 miles. So, in my mind, every 62 miles, I will have to stop and recharge the battery. On a 350 mile journey, I'll have to stop five times, charge the battery to full each time, or use a petrol engine. But if I'm using petrol, I'm not getting the 353.1 miles on electric, am I? To get 353.1 miles on electric only, I could do about, let's say, 60 miles each day during the week, get home, plug it in each night, each day it'll be full again in the morning, then at the weekend I'll be able to do, say, half a down electric. This doesn't make sense, and that's the con, because one of the biggest reasons people who buy a PHEV do so is because, wait for it, they can't charge at home. Yeah, the very essential element of the equation to get any efficiency and cheap motoring out of a PHEV is now no longer possible. They think, I can't charge at home, so I can't have an EV, so I'll get the very next best thing, a PHEV. I can charge it and use it on electricity if I want to, or I can put in petrol and use that if I want to. Best of both worlds. And that's the fatal flaw. And I'm sure you've already spotted it. When they collect it, new, it'll have a part or full tank of petrol and a part or full battery charge. And on the way home, or within a day or so, they'll top up the fuel tank. Plugging in and charging is seen as a nightmare, journey into the unknown, so they'll put that off for now. Or need I say more? Some who finally do go to a public charger, they might have a bad experience, they'll never go back. Some who go and find they save little or no money over filling up with petrol, they never go back. Those who get a company car often get an all-star type petrol payment card, which is really easy to use. The harsh reality is over 90% of all PHEVs never run fully on batteries at any time in their entire life. And a PHEV on petrol is not at all efficient. This BMW 330i was reporting a 31 miles per gallon total from new and had not run on battery at all. Carting around a heavy battery that was barely used was a waste of time and money, and it's likely that the full petrol or non-plug-in hybrid version would have been more economical and less polluting. Yeah, before anyone takes me to task, all PHEVs do to do some regen braking, and a few use the petrol engine for some topping off, for example, on the motorway, but hybrids also do that, and that's with a very much smaller, lighter battery. Well, at last, the government has seen the error of their ways, or at least the lies of the auto industry. These PHEVs are not in the main being used as they were told they would be and as they should be used. I praise those, by the way, who do use them properly, because if used properly, they are perfectly OK. But as I pointed out, the majority could easily get better motoring out of a full BEV. At least they don't have to cart around a block of an ice and a fuel tank full of flammable and explosive fuel. All it should have taken was someone with an ounce of common sense in the government to realise that a PHEV with a 62 mile range on battery cannot be averaging 353.1 miles WLTP range without a fair bit of jiggery pokery. Hmm. That's my polite way of saying outright lying. Are they really that dense? Did they actually make sense to someone? Well, to me, 
we should always apply the common sense approach. Well, in this case, case if I was doing it, I would select a hundred members of the government. Uh, ministers, the staff, the researchers, the assistants, security staff, just a good cross-section. Give each of them a PHEV. No instruction, no tuition, no coaching. Just give them a car, give them a portable three-pin charger, give them a petrol debit card, like the All-Star, and send them on their way. Tell them to just drive for a month, and then at the end of the month, hand them back. Well, like the BMW I filmed, the dashboard and the onboard computer tells an amazingly detailed picture. It'll tell them how much fuel it took, how many miles per gallon it achieved, how much electricity charge it actually took, how many miles per kilowatt hour it achieved, how many miles it drove on pure electric, how many on pure petrol, how much regen it used, how many miles it achieved. I, it's fantastic amount of data that would then allow someone to determine what most people in the real world in which most of us live would likely to get from a PHEV. Instead, they asked the auto industry. I ask you, crazy. Anyway, if it turned out that the majority say over 90% of all the people simply drove them on petrol all the time because they can't be bothered to work out how they work, then maybe they shouldn't be subsidised so heavily or at all. But at least they now seem to have reached that same conclusion. Most people can't be bothered to find out. And that is one of the biggest advantages of going full EV. You actually have to be bothered to find out or your battery goes flat and you go nowhere. You also find out at the end of the month when you work out the cost of charging it, either at home or at a public charger, that they're not cheap at all if you couldn't be bothered to look for the deals. Don't bother switching. You charge at home, it's going to cost you 25 pence. Bother, switch, and you can charge for 7 pence. Duh! Can't charge at home? Then don't bother. Just choose your nearest public charger, charge for 85 pence per kilowatt hour. Bother, spend 5 minutes checking other options in your immediate area and forever after charge for 65p or 45p per kilowatt hour. Just how much bother is that? We seem to be a nation that's getting really lazy and then get real defeatist comments like, oh, I couldn't be bothered all this fussing around, all these apps, all these cards and networks. Really? Please reread my last sentence. I said spend five minutes checking other options in your immediate area, then forever after charge for 65p or 45p a kilowatt hour. You just spent tens of thousands of pounds on an EV or hundreds of pounds a month, and you couldn't be bothered to spend five minutes doing a once only check of your immediate area or of your home tariff. I do fear we're heading down the route of idiocracy. Oh, that's a cracking movie, by the way. Highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. It's currently on Disney, I believe. I won't spoil it for you. I'm Dave.